uh, now we go in this video I will explain about steady incompressible flow in circular, fi uh, circular pipe previously I've already uh, explained about how to derive the hagen posela equation and we already do one example based on the hagen posela and now what if we want to find the delta p which is pressure drop in the pipe with fittings or a straight pipe no, uh, now we are not uh, ex uh, in this slide in this video I will not explain about the um, fittings okay minor losses now this uh, videos in these videos we are uh, more on uh, I'm I'm more on cons uh, explaining about the major losses in the straight pipes so how can we actually use Bernoulli's equation to determine the delta P for the straight pipes Okay, hagen posela only applicable for lamina and straight pipes. But what if in the straight pipes we have a turbulent flow? So, in that case, we cannot use hagen posela for the turbulent and transition flow. And basically, uh, normally we are dealing with a turbulent flow in a pipe. So, what we have to do is we have to apply the Bernoulli's equation. So how to apply that? In this video, I will explain on you uh, on how to uh, use Bernoulli's equation to find the uh, delta P of your uh, system, okay, piping system. So this uh, slide, objective is to uh, acquire fundamental of characteristic of turbulent flow so we have the learning outcomes at the end of this chapter students should be able to first calculate pressure drop okay by using the Bernoulli's equation you may found the uh, pressure drop for the system uh, for the system or the piping system number two calculate heat loss due to friction hf using darcy westbach equation Okay, and then number three, determine friction factor from Moody chart. Okay, we have uh, Moody's chart. Uh, in the darcy westbach equation, we have to find what is the friction factor. So you will see after this. And that friction factors will come out from the Moody's chart. Okay, and the last one, calculate relative roughness. So the friction factor formula for horizontal pipe is this. Okay, delta P is F L rho V squared over D2. Okay, where F is a function, okay, it's a function of Reynolds number and relative roughness. So epsilon over D is relative roughness. So if we have only epsilon, that is absolute roughness, okay? And you have to be careful in the question. The question may give you relative roughness or absolute roughness. If the question gives you absolute roughness, therefore you have to divide with diameter of the pipe to get what is the relative roughness. This diameter represents diameter inlet. So if your pipe has a thickness, then you have to divide the absolute roughness with the inner diameter of the pipe okay so the energy equation for steady incompressible flow previously we know that the Bernoulli's equation is this one with the assumptions of that uh, of that we are neglecting the friction losses you may refer to the previous uh, videos that I explained about the Bernoulli's equation where this is the general Bernoulli's equation which I uh, enclose this where we have to assume that there is no friction in the pipe so what will happen when we have a friction in our pipe we have to add some more parameters here 
which is HF. So this is friction heat. HF is a friction heat. And this friction heat is caused by the friction in the pipe. That's why we have to calculate the friction factor in a pipe. So with the assumptions from this uh, equation, with the assumptions of constant diameter, so what will happen when we have a constant diameter, and as you can remember the, Bernoulli, uh, the continuity equation, Q1 is equal to Q2. So U1, A1 equal to U2, A2. So A will have, will need diameter uh, for 1 and A2 for diameter at 2. So if the diameter 1 and diameter 2 are the same, therefore we can cancel out area 1 and area 2 because area 1 and area 2 have the same diameter, okay, the same value, sorry. And then what we have we will have here is u1 equal to u2. If we substitute u1 and u2 into this equation, we are actually can cancel out the term v1 and v2. So v1 square over 2g and v2 square over 2g can be cancelled out. So this will be 0. So we are uh, cancelling uh, terms for v1 and v2. So that V1 equal to V2, horizontal Z1 equal to Z2. If we have the arrangement of the pipe is in horizontal. So here is in horizontal pipe. So as I mentioned before, if we are applying the Bernoulli's equation, we are always take the point at the center of the pipe. Okay, point number one and the point number two. So for the horizontal pipe, as we can see here, the Z value, okay, the elevation of Z1 and Z2 is the same. Therefore, if Z1 is equal to Z2, we can cancel out the uh, Z1 and Z2 terms in our Bernoulli's equation. So from this equation, we can cancel out Z1 and Z2. So this equation will become P1 over rho G equal to P1 over Sorry, P2. P2 over rho G plus HF. So you rearrange this equation and make it like this. So P1 minus P2 over rho G over rho G equal to HF. So here we have P1 minus P2 equal to rho G HF. So that's why it turns this equation from this equation into this equation so p1 minus p2 is a delta p or a pressure drop in a pipe so that here we have hf so hf here is the equation comes from the darcy we will use darcy westbach equation so you have to remember this equation okay because the fluid mechanics will not give you all the equation uh, for you to solve the problems. So it is important for you to memorize this equation. So HF equal to friction factor. F is a friction factor. This friction factor comes from Moody's chart. Okay, I will explain about the Moody's chart after this. You do not have to worry. So L here represents length of the pipe. Okay, total length of the pipe. So L is total length. If you have a fittings after this in the chapter uh, in the chapter 8.3, you will know that uh, this L is actually a total length of the pipe. Okay, and then the diameter here D B, uh, uppercase D is diameter of the pipe, and V here is a velocity of the pipe. So you have to square the velocity. And then the last term is 2G. G is gravitational accelerations. So you have to use this equation and then substitute into this equation in order for you to understand what is the value of P1 minus P2. So as you can see here, P1 minus P2, this equation will give you the unit of Newton per meter square. 
if you do not want the meet newton per meter square what you have to do is you rearrange the equation or you divide all this equation with rho g therefore your equation will becomes like this okay rho g equal to h f rho g divided by rho g so you will will have a p1 I wrote it, delta P over rho G equal to H F. So this will give you the value of H meter. Okay. In general, with V1 equal to V2, the energy equation gives. Okay. So if from here, we know that uh, if that, uh, if the, uh, the pipes arranged not in horizontal maybe there is some inclination okay or uh, two different elevation for point 0.1 and point 0.2 so we have here z1 and z2 so we have z here so what we have to do from that equation we are only cancelling out the terms for the velocity okay but we do not canceling the z value lah okay because z is in inclination so if in this case you do not have to cancel z1 and z2 therefore you have to rearrange the equation it becomes like this and then from here we know that hf is the equation of darcy westbach equation so from Darcy Westbach equation, this equation you substitute into this, you will get this equation. Okay, so part of the pressure change is due to elevation change and part due to the head loss. So from here, from this equation, we know that the pressure drop P1 minus P2 of the system of the piping system uh, contributes by the elevation change of elevation and then the uh, frictional effects in the pipes due to the uh, Reynolds number and also the friction of the pipe, surface roughness of the pipe. Okay, so now what we have to do and I will, uh, what we have to do is to find F from the darcy westbach equation to solve uh, what is the HF then we have to calculate what is the friction factors from the darcy westbach equation and then what we have to do is we have to calculate we have to refer to the moody's chart so moody's chart as we see here there is two three region here lamina flow transition region and then the last one is turbulent flow so for the lamina flow F is equal to 64 over Reynolds number uh, where the independent where the values of the friction factors here is independence of uh, relative roughness so as we can see here the graph of the Reynolds uh, of the laminar flow friction factor is directly proportional to the Reynolds number it didn't uh, the relative roughness does not contribute to the reductions of the friction factor. So for the laminar flow, only Reynolds number will affect to the values of the friction factor. So that is what this uh, statement uh, says. Okay. So in laminar flow, either you want to refer to this figure, Moody's chart, or you may use this equation this is equation you may use this equation in order for you to find what is the friction factor you just need to find what is reynolds number and then substitute into this equation then calculate you will get your friction factor so because this is independence of relative roughness but for the very high reynolds number as we can see here for the very high reynolds number for example 10 to the power of 5 for example eh? and we take if we draw a line a line straight and then we take a look at the uh, value of uh, 
Reynolds number which greater than 10 to the power of 5. As we can see here, the Reynolds number does not contribute uh, to the friction factor's value. So it is quite straight here. And then if we put it here, the friction factor for the, this Reynolds number will be the same as these friction factors. So what does contribute if we have a turbulent flow in our piping system is the relative roughness. As you can see here, each of these lines represent different relative roughness. As the relative roughness increases, we can see that the friction factor of the uh, Moody's chart will be increased or the friction factor in the pipes will be increased. So for the Reynolds number, uh, for the uh, turbulent flow, the values of the friction factors is dependent on the epsilon over D, which is re relative roughness, but independent of Reynolds number. So dependent, eh? dependent, dependent on epsilon over d this is relative roughness this is independence of epsilon over d relative roughness but dependent okay dependent on reynolds number here for the very high reynolds number it is independent of reynolds number but dependent on relative roughness Okay, as I mentioned before, if we have 10 to the power of 5, if we get here, the Reynolds number will be the same for uh, the diffraction factor will be the same for the Reynolds number at 10 to the power of 6. So Reynolds number here will be the same as here because it is a straight line, almost a straight line. Okay, but the change is only uh, the, 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 the F value here is dependent on the relative roughness, okay? So, that is the quest equation will be used in order for you to find what is the delta P in a piping system, okay? For a straight line, now we are not including the uh, minor losses. In this video we are calculating the major losses a straight long pipe okay that is major losses so let's take a look at this exercise so calculate the loss of heat due to the friction in a horizontal circular pipe of 40 mm diameter and 750 meter long when water Dynamic viscosity is 1.14 times 10 to the power of minus 3 newton second meter square, meter minus 2, flows at a rate of A is 4 liters per minute, B is 200 liters per minute. And given that relative roughness of the pipe is 0 0.002. So now, in this example, this information is for relative roughness which is epsilon over d if i change this into absolute roughness therefore i mention it about this value so this is absolute roughness if you want to make a comparison between absolute roughness and relative roughness you may see either that you need have uh, that ve that uh, value, this value has unit or not. If this value has the unit, therefore that is absolute roughness. So in order for you to divide the absolute roughness with diameter, it must have the same unit. For example, if absolute roughness is an in meter, therefore you have to divide the diameter and calculate the diameter in meter and then divide both. Okay, divide this uh, epsilon uh, over diameter you can uh, you cannot divide if there is no uh, un uh, there is if uh, the units is not the same okay now let's take a look at example one so what we have to do in fluid mechanics we have to change all of uh, the information into si unit which means that all the values with the units must uh, value 
uh, which with units and that units must be in as as i unit so now i have four liter per minute therefore i have to change it into meter cube per second so one minute is 60 second and then times with 1000 liter is equivalent to one meter cubing therefore what the value for your q okay is one uh, sorry 6.667 times 10 to the power of minus 5 meter cube per second okay from here we know that we have to find Reynolds number for the the first method is to calculate okay the first step is to calculate what is the Reynolds number of this example so we have to find what is the Reynolds number now to find the Reynolds number we need velocity so we have to calculate velocity from the volumetric flow rate so rearrange this equation to find what is u so u is q 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 5 meter cube per second and divide with area by diameter is 40 mm times 10 to the power of minus 3 meter square over 4 so that is your equation to to find what is uh, the velocity so from here we get the velocity is equivalent to 0.0529 meter per second so that is our velocity next what we have to do we substitute the velocity value into the reynolds number equation so reynolds number equal to rho v d over mu so our rho is water water if if it is not state in our example uh, in our question therefore the rho for water is 1000 so velocity is 0 0.0529 and then times with diameter is 40 times 10 to the power of minus 3 and divide with dynamic viscosity 1.14 times 10 to the power of minus so this value you will get 1856 or the uh, to to refer to your Bernoulli's uh, to refer to your Moody's chart you have to convert it into 1.9 times 10 to the power of 3 1 2 3 okay this is your uh, Reynolds number which is below than 2400 then it, it is a laminar flow so for a laminar flow then we have to uh, see we have to find what is the friction factor for the laminar flow because in the darcy westbach equation we have to have friction factor value in order to find what is the heat okay pressure heat now to find F, let's take a look at this figure. So we have 1.9 times 10 to the power of 3, which it is, uh, that value is in between 10 to the power of 3 and 2 times 10 to the power of 3. So what you have to do, uh, in my class, I will ask student, previous class, I will ask student to find what is the length of this uh, from here to here find it with your ruler and calculate it and then you already have your value of 1.9 times 10 to the power of 3 for Reynolds number so you will make an interpolation for example so 10 to the power of 3 you put your uh, eraser your starting eraser is 0 you put it here and then you calculate what is the length of this length uh, for example let's say the length uh, that shows uh, that you uh, that you measure is about one centimeter for example eh? so you have to 
you have to have a ruler to measure what is the length of these two 10.3 and 2 times 10 to the power of 3 okay so let's say your your value is 10 to the power of 3 and in your ruler numbers you start with 0 centimeter okay that is the value 1 times 10 to the power of 3 so you want to find what is the interception for 1.9 times 10 to the power of 3 so you do not know what is the value of x and the next one is 2 times 10 to the power of 3 so you have measured it with your ruler and then you get 1 centimeter so from here you have to make an interpolation okay x minus 0 over 1 minus 0 and then equal to 1.9 minus 1 over 2.0 minus 1 so you will get what is your x value okay so if you get that x value then take your rulers start your zero here and then measure it for example you get 0 0.9 so put your uh, uh, your ruler here and then measure 0 0.9 then tick at that location so i get what i got 1.9 times 10 to the power of 3 at that location and then what i will do i will uh, draw a straight line uh, draw a straight line okay when I draw a straight line, it will in intercept with this line, the laminar flow line here. The point of interception will be dragged to this friction factor. Okay, friction factor uh, exists. So from here, I will do the same with this one, this method. So this uh, interception, this interception is in between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 therefore i will put my ruler here at zero and i will measure the length of this uh, 0 0.03 to 0 0.04 okay for example length is about two centimeter for example okay then my 0 0 0 0.04 is two centimeter at this level we already know the points of interception for this one, we do not know the point of interception, what we, but we do have the value that we want to interpolate. So now, we do not have the value of friction factor, but we do have the value or the point or the length of the interception. So you have to measure from zero, this your ruler, and then take a look at this length. So how much of this length? For example, one point five centimeter so now my 0 0.03 is zero centimeter and then x i do not know the value of the friction factor but i do know about the length is 1.5 centimeter okay and then the last one is 0 0.04 okay I get I got two centimeter. So then you have to interpolate this. Okay, x minus zero point zero three divided by zero point zero four minus zero point zero three equal to one point five minus zero divided by two minus zero. So you will get your value of x, which is in this at this point, x is friction, your friction factor. Then I get my friction factor is 0 0.0338 for the first question, okay? So that is how you uh, measure or calculate uh, your F value. So F, I get about 0 0.0338. From here, you will substitute into darcy Weisbach equation. F L over D v squared over 2g substitute into this equation all the values that you get or you calculate before so hf equal to 
zero point zero three three eight times with seven hundred and fifty divide by forty times with zero point zero five two nine square over two times nine point eight one. So what you get here, HF is 0 0.09 meter. So this is your first HF, frictional heat, okay, from the darcy westbach equation. Now let's take a look at the second question where we have the same question but we have 200 liters per minute for the volumetric flow rate. So now we have to find what is the frictional heat from a darcy westbach equation. Okay, so which means that this value that you calculated before, this one, is to represent the major losses in terms of the heat. Okay, major losses in a straight pipe. Okay, major losses of the straight pipe. So H, I put it as major. So 0, 0.0. 9 meter straight pipe okay straight pipe will have major losses so if we have fittings then that is minor losses after this next chapter you will get what is uh, you will know what is actually h minor after we uh, when we do some uh, we do we have some uh, pipe arrangement with fittings so now we calculate the second example where we have 200 liters per minute so that liters per minute has to be changed into meter cube per second. Okay, 200 liters per minute. And then I will times with one minute is 60 second. Times with 1000 liter is equivalent to one meter cube. So what we get here is 0 0.00333 meter cube per second now we already get the uh, volumetric flow rate in terms of SI units lah okay meter cube per second now we have to calculate what is the Reynolds number from the Reynolds number we have to we have to have velocity of the fluid so now we do not have the velocity but we do have the val uh, the volumetric flow rates so we know that from the velocity flow rate Q, we can calculate for velocity. So rearrange the equation Q over E. So Q is 0 0.0033 times 0.0033 meter cube per second. And you divide with pi uh, 40 times 10 to the power of minus 3 square diameter over 4. So from here, you will get your velocity is about 2.643 meter per second. Now from the velocity, we can calculate the value of Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is rho vd over mu. So the density of the water is 1000, velocity is 2.643 times with 40, okay, and you divide with dynamic viscosity is 1.14 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And your Reynolds number is about 92,736 which is equivalent to 9.3 times 10 to the power of 4. To refer to Moody's chart, you have to uh, change this kinds of form into this. Okay? You have to have the power of 4 or 3 or 5. It depends on, the, uh, in, on your calculation. Now, we do have the Reynolds number and we do have... Uh, the epsilon over d relative roughness previous example we do not use the epsilon over diameter because as i mentioned before 
the re the Reynolds number or the laminar flow does not uh, the friction factor does not depends on the epsilon over d it is only depends on the Reynolds number but in this case as we can see here the uh, this value is much more greater than 4000 which is turbulent flow so for a turbulent flow it is depends on the relative roughness so the relative roughness is 0 0.0 Zero 0.02 I think okay, 0 0.002 okay your relative roughness is 0 0.002 now we have to refer to the uh, Moody's chart okay now uh, let's take a look at here we have epsilon over d every of this line represent epsilon over the relative roughness so we do have relative roughness is 0 0.002 is it is in here so this you are only consider this line or only you do not consider any other line because that line is is for epsilon over d others epsilon over d okay this line 0 0.02 so what you have to do uh, you have to find what is the Reynolds number okay 9.3 so for, for this one uh, previously we do our interpolation at this level at this point now what you have to do is interpolate at this point between 8 and 1 times 10 to the power of 5 okay so as you can see here, we have 10 to the power of 4, 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 5. So, whichever value below than this is 10 to the power of 2. This 10 to the power of 4, whichever value below than this is 10 to the power of 3. Same goes to here, 10 to the power of 4. And here is 10 to the power of 5. 10 to the power of 6. Okay, uh, this is a 7. So all of this is 10 to the power of 7. So now we have 9.3 times 10 to the power of 5. So find the points of interception at this level, at this uh, point, this two point. And then you take that point and then draw a straight line upward. Okay. And then your uh, epsilon over d is 0 0.02. So find the point of interception. You do not have to uh, draw a straight line here. No, it is wrong. So you have to refer to this line only. And then, as you can see here, this line is intercept at this point. Okay. What you have to do when you found that uh, you find that in the point of intersection then you drag to this point okay find it uh, at this point find it what is the value of f by using the interpolation so what if your result your epsilon over d is in between these two for example 0 0.04 and 0 0.02 your epsilon over d is 0 0.003 Okay, so you have you do not have you cannot uh, assume that the values is in the middle. So for example, I draw a straight line. For example, so our point is in between zero point zero zero four and zero point zero zero three. You know that this zero point zero zero three is in the middle. So you just make an assumption that uh, this is the uh, center of these two line of these two points. Then you drag that one that point and then find the f value no you cannot do that what you have to do you have to make interpolation at this point so find the the point of interpolation by interpolating find the point of intersection by interpolating these two points so take your ruler and put it here at zero mark two and then calculate measure what is the length of this this line eh? if you have the straight line here 
do not take other line so you will focus at your Reynolds number line so and then you calculate what is the length of these two by using your ruler and then 0 0.02 is your 0 centimeter and then what you want to find is 0 0.03 so what is x centimeter and then your 0 0.04 is let's say 1 centimeter so 1 centimeter so do the interpolation x minus 0 1 minus 0 equal to 0 0.0 0 0.0 eh? all of this is 0 0.00 0 0.003 minus 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.004 minus 0 0.002 okay then x is equal to for example 0 0.5 okay take your ruler and then measure it up to 1.5 then tick on the line okay on your Reynolds line Reynolds number line do not tick uh, other point okay other line or maybe you want uh, you draw here this is the Reynolds number line and then you draw another line here or you put it your point here and then you detract and find F totally wrong so you have to refer only to your Reynolds line so this is Reynolds line again so refer to this Reynolds number line okay and tick at on that line and then that is the point of interception for 0 0.004 uh, for point, uh, for 0 0.003 that point of interception then you have to drag draw a straight line and then find what is the fact uh, what is the friction factor that is how you calculate for uh, if you have the relative roughness is in between these two values okay now we already get the value for this uh, second uh, example 0 0.00239 okay so from there we will substitute the value of f is 0 0.0239 okay so substitute this friction factor value into darcy westbrook equation so 0 0.0239 times with 750 times with 2.64 3 square and you divide this value with 40 times 2 times 9.81 so you will get your HF value is 159.55 meter okay so if you have a turbulent flow uh, regime in your uh, straight uh, in your straight pipes then you will have the pot, uh, you will have the frictional head much more bigger that rather than you have uh, flows that is in lamina so this is major losses so i will i can wrote it as h major as uh, 159.55 meter so you will have this value okay Okay, this is the value of friction factor 0 0.0239. So that's all uh, from me. Okay, this is what uh, I've mentioned before if the values of your uh, epsilon over D is in between. Okay, uh, maybe I was wrong, uh, substitute the wrong uh, friction factor before because F, this F is for 0 0.005. And for this uh, 9.3, we have 0 .00, 0 0.0252. So I'm really sorry. Please do your own correction on that part. Okay. Friction factor is equal to 0 0.0252. Okay. That's all for the uh, Moody's chart. And then find the major losses in the pipes. Thank you.